Here are eight tips to build healthy habits in 2022 and to help you achieve your goals or your New Year's resolutions. I wanted to release this video in January because everybody's gonna be setting a New Year's resolutions for themselves. And I think these eight tips are really gonna help you create positive change in your life. And even if your New Year's resolution isn't related to anything in your career, which I do think something should be there, even a small goal, you're still gonna to wanna to use all of these tips to help you make progress in 2022. Progress creates inspiration and inspiration creates motivation, which will help you inch closer and closer towards achieving your goal and getting to those New Year's resolutions. Now, even if you've set resolutions just like these in the past, but have never been able to achieve it, that is what this video is for. I'm going to give you actionable tips and advice that truly do work that will help you stay motivated and make progress this year. And the first tip is to make good habits easier for you to do and make bad habits harder for you to do. Now, a great example is something that I actually learned from what Google does in their micro kitchens. And what they actually do is they put all of the healthy food, snacks, and drinks at the front of the refrigerator, clear in your line of sight, so that you're only looking at healthy alternatives and options. Anything that's bad for you is usually tucked away far back in, the, in their refrigerator or covered from plain site like in a jar or in a container so if you are potentially trying to lose weight this year and you know that you should be giving up soda you should make good habits easier for you by putting water or other healthier alternatives at the front of your fridge closer to your line of view and you should do your best to hide all of the sodas or really bad snacks put them in the back of the fridge or hide them away in a cupboard so you're not tempted whenever you see them now my second tip is to recognize when you have many bad habits or many bad behaviors that contribute to an overall much bigger problem or really big bad habit. For example, if your goal this year is to lose, let's say 15 pounds, but you don't feel like you have any time during the day to actually go to a gym and work out, well, maybe you have many bad habits that lead to that overall feeling that you just have no time in your day. For example, if you spend 15 minutes taking a shower in the morning and taking a shower at night, and you know that you don't actually need 15 minutes to take a bath every single time, set a timer when you go in there for maybe five minutes. And now you've just given yourself an extra 10 minutes to go and do a workout every single day. Or if you know that when you go to the restroom, you tend to bring your phone and that sometimes leads you to sitting on the toilet for 30 minutes at a time, maybe you don't bring your phone with you whenever you need to use the restroom. And now, you'll have another 20 to 25 minutes on top of those 10 minutes that you can contribute to a workout every single day. The third tip is to swap out bad habits or use alternatives instead of trying to go pure cold turkey right from the beginning. So if you're trying to lose weight this year, instead of drinking soda with your lunch or your meals, maybe you swap it out for a flavored water instead. The next tip is to set smaller achievable goals to help you build micro habits in the right way for a good resolution. Using the weight loss example again, if you know that you need to give up ordering takeout multiple times a week, instead of trying to cut it out entirely, maybe instead of ordering a side of fries, you start by not ordering fries for one meal. And then the next meal you don't order fries and you also swap out white rice for brown rice. And then the next meal after that, maybe you swap out rice for salad. So set smaller achievable goals that help build micro good habits that will add up and make progress over time. Next, try to find satisfying ways for you to stay motivated. For example, if you know that you need to start networking this year so that you can get some referrals at some of these top tech companies that you want to work with, but you really hate networking or you feel like you just don't have the time or whatever excuse you may have, try to make it really enjoyable and satisfying for you every time you're doing it. So if you have a favorite coffee shop that you love to go to, whenever you're setting up your networking calls or meetings, make them go and meet you at your favorite coffee shop. Or if you have a favorite restaurant that serves a dish that you absolutely love, then have all of your networking meetings be at that restaurant. So it's something that you actually look forward to and stay motivated for. Another tip is to add habits onto pre-existing habits that you already have to enhance them and help you contribute to your goal. 
for example, if you have a really long commute and you typically listen to thriller or crime or murder podcasts, why don't you actually watch and listen to the Career Shakers YouTube channel where you can get free weekly career advice about interviewing, networking, and changing careers. Or if you typically do a lot of interviews at your company for a particular type of role, maybe you should set aside five minutes after the interview to go through some of those interview questions that you were asked and see what would your answers be so you can actually leverage these interviews as informal interview practice for yourself. Another way to build and set good habits is to integrate them with something fun that you really enjoy. Like if you want to apply for 10 jobs a week, maybe you should work with one of your friends so that both of you can do your job search and applications together, keep each other accountable, but also make it really fun. Or when you're editing your resume, maybe you listen to your favorite type of song. So that really keeps you motivated and excited. So it's not only focusing on how you hate editing your resume or how boring it can be, but also I need to edit my resume, but I also get to listen to my favorite music. And my last tip is to create accountability for yourself in as many ways as possible, not just one. I'll give you a few examples. So for me, I tend to be money motivated. And so what I will do is I will set a goal for the year and I will give money, my own money, to one of my friends. And it's usually a significant amount of money, like a few hundred dollars or something. And I'll tell them, if I don't achieve this goal by the end of the year, you can keep all of this cash. But if I do achieve the goal, I want all the money back. So please don't spend it. And I'm also a visual learner and I, I like to have visuals all the time. And so I have a giant whiteboard set up in my room and every single morning I have my goal written out so I see it every single day when I wake up and I have a reminder set on my phone. So every time I swipe down to see all of my notifications, my reminder is right there staring me in the face every single day, telling me exactly what I'm supposed to be working on, what progress I need to make and what my goals are for this year. And this helps me stay motivated and helps me be accountable with myself. Well, I hope these eight tips really do help you. Give a few of them a try or give them all a try and see if they're able to help you build healthy, good habits and make progress to, towards your New Year's resolution. And if you want to create more accountability for yourself, why don't you put down in the comments what your New Year's resolution is for 2022 and then you can use the community to help keep you motivated. Thank you all for watching. Really do appreciate it. Good luck with these goals this year and I'll see you in the next video.